time, the star time shifts through our ordinary sun time. Can, so you, is there a way to find out <coughs> sidereal time? Do you know? Uh, there's a web. There are a couple of websites on the internet that give you sidereal time. So you just go to Google and put in sidereal time. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's very interesting because so 1,300 hours sidereal time is a good time to do an experiment. 1,800 hours is a bad time, and you can look at the internet when this is, and that 1,300 and 1,800 hours moves through the day. Mm -hmm. So it's di it's different each day, slightly different each day because it processes. But the thing that's uh, quite interesting is that this exp this effect goes away when you're inside of a shielded room. So it looks like the interference is an electromagnetic interference because the interference goes away when you're shielded. But the psychic ability is not electromagnetic because the psychic functioning works just fine inside of a shielded room or even inside of a submerged submarine. And the fact that we're able to look into the distance just as well as we can look into the future uh, shows that this could not be an electromagnetic phenomena. It's something, it is not an electromagnetic phenomena, but it must be in some way connected with it or this wouldn't happen. Well, what we find is that working in a shielded room helps a person manifest their psychic ability. So the electromagnetic portion of the spectrum seems to interfere with ESP, but it doesn't seem to be the carrier for psychic ability because very excellent shielding doesn't interfere with it, and being a submarine doesn't interfere with it. Right. On the other hand, if you're trying to write a book or write a paper and somebody's operating a pneumatic drill outside your window, the sound waves from that drill could certainly interfere with your thinking and your writing but the thinking and writing doesn't actually have anything to do with sound waves. Right. In, in so, other words, it dis it's a distraction in a way. And, yes. And on this level, perhaps there, it's a perceptual distraction of a, of a kind that we can't, aren't directly aware of. It, appear, it appears that that's the case, because that's, people uh, certainly are able to function excellently in airplanes, in submarines, under all sorts of unusual electrically shielded conditions. What we believe is going on is that there is a non-local connection. The reason that psychic ability works independent of distance and independent of time is that you're not actually separated from the person. Distant healing also works this way. Uh, people doing therapeutic touch are in the near field of the person they're healing, and it's as though there's an energy connection between the uh, energy healer and the patient. However, spiritual healers and distant healers and psychic healers can work on healing a person who is hundreds of thousands of miles away, and that works just as well. Now, you say in the book, quite fascinating, the, that distant healing is actually easier to do than remote viewing. Uh, well, I think I say that uh, intuitive diagnosis. I mean, yeah, that's right. Intuitive diagnosis, than, excuse me. Than remote viewing. The, yeah. the intuitive diagnosis, you're able to quiet your mind and describe what it looks like inside the body of a distant person. And you may only have a card with their name written on it as a way of contacting that person. Uh, I became interested in intuitive diagnosis because so many people are doing it. There are a number of books written describing how to do intuitive diagnosis. My friend Judith Orloff is a well-known psychiatrist and yes. lecturer on remote viewing. And yeah, she's she, been on this program. And she's an intuitive. And what she told me is that, indeed, uh, it's much easier to do intuitive diagnosis of a sick person than to do remote viewing of a distant location. So with her encouragement, I got a series of videotapes from the teaching company, learned some anatomy and physiology so I could describe what I was looking at psychically, and was quite surprised to discover that I could describe and diagnose the ailments of people that I had never met who were far away. And in some cases, I was able to describe things that were matter the matter with them that were even unknown 
by the person who gave me the card. So it uh, was quite interesting to me that as a physicist uh, who is not a healer, uh, I could learn to do the intuitive diagnosis very quickly. And I'm so impressed with that that I have a whole chapter in the book, a whole chapter in Limitless Mind describing how to do the intuitive diagnosis as something that people can quickly learn to incorporate into their lives. Which is amazingly powerful, by the way, because, you know, the idea of being able to incorporate something that seems like something that would be done by some psychic that's beyond anything we could ever accomplish, and it turns out it's very doable. That's exciting. It's well, I encourage exciting. people to get in touch with the part of themselves as psychic because it gives them contact with, a capability that can save their lives as they're driving down the freeway, and it also gives them guidance in the direction to the end of suffering because they then have control over their own chattering minds and can move from feelings of conditioned awareness into feelings of spaciousness and peacefulness. Which is awesome because you can... Uh, let me ask you this: uh, You you mentioned just in passing the the uh, it can help you uh, while driving down the highway, and we didn't we haven't talked at all about the wonderful material about precognition in your book. Let's talk a little bit about precognition. We've only got a couple minutes left, but let's sort of end with that. Well, there's no doubt that people can learn to recognize which of their dreams are precognitive, as compared to with the ones that are just wish fulfillment or anxiety. For example, if you have a dream about failing an examination that you've not studied for, that would not be a precognitive dream. But if you have a dream about uh, the wheel falling off your car, you could then wisely take the car into the mechanic and have the nuts tightened because the evidence strongly shows that you are not required to have the experience that you dream about. Your dream is a forecast and... It tells you about the probable future rather than the future that must occur. So you can make use of these precognitive dreams to avoid hazards. And you recognize them because the precognitive dream is generally free of the previous day's residue and comes across in a usually a bizarre or a particularly vivid, clear, bright, unusual context rather than wish fulfillment or an anxiety dream from the previous day's residue. So the trick is to learn to separate out the precognitive dreams from the ordinary anxiety dreams that you might have in the course of the night. Yeah, and you teach us some very straightforward ways of doing that. We're just about finished, but I just can't resist. I just have to ask one more question, and this is about the investment stuff. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you did and uh, what happened in this area? Well, we had a enthusiastic investor to work with, and we were investing in the silver commodities futures market so that each week for nine weeks we would ask a psychic to describe the object we're going to hand him at the end of the week. And he had to describe that object. He had no idea what it was, of course. And depending on what object he saw, we would either buy silver or sell silver. So at the end of nine weeks, we had made nine forecasts. Each of them were correct, and we made well over $100,000. And this was written up in the Wall Street Journal. Yes. And Nova made a film about us called The Case of ESP. And you can learn a lot, a lot more about this in Limitless Mind. Folks, it's it's a really wonderful, wonderful book. Uh, Russell has been focusing more and more over the years and has learned to communicate a very empowering message. Terrific. Thank you so much for being with us, Russell Targ. Thank you very much. I'm happy to have the chance to tell people why bother with ESP. <laughs>